So now we're here doing the resistance test. Now you're going to do resistance tests on uh, resistors as well as on motors. All right, but the process is still the same. The first thing you want to do is, if I want to find out if I want to do continuity or resistance. Well, if continuity, all right, is taken into perspective, all I'm doing with continuity is I turn it to my little symbol, I have my meter plugs in, and I go up and I read. You hear that beeping noise? What's that telling me? It tells me nothing more than the distance between where I left, put the uh, needle and the, the other uh, prong, it's connected. That's all it's telling me. It has no magical number, no nothing. Just that from point A to point B, it's connected. In this exercise, we're not worried about that. You normally use this when you're checking motor windings unless you want to get know what the amperage is on them. If you want, or correction, resistance. If you want to know what the resistance readings of, i.e., let's say, this resistor, then you must turn it to ohms, all right? Then you come across and touch your leads. In this case, you look at your uh, screen and it's point zero, or correction, point 308 ohms, all right, or correction, mega ohms, all right. It will either give it to you in a decimal form or it will give it to you uh, in a whole number form. But just read the little uh, scale over here and it will tell you what you're in. The capital M is mega, then you got the symbol, the Greek symbol for ohms or it may have um, the small m from uh, milli. All right. So again, go down, check the leads. It's 3.87 k ohms. All right, k ohms, k representing thousands. So that's 3.86 thousand of an ohm. All right. That is all there is to reading ohms. Resistance, again, back here, resistance symbol and the diode symbol. Again, we're not really concerned about the diode, just the res uh, uh, continuity uh, input here. All right. If you want to find out from point A to point B, if it's good, you can check it out. Now. What's that telling me? Well, I, one, I don't hear the buzzer, and two, I'm reading an OL on my scale. Therefore, this resistor is broken. Now, somewhere along the line, they probably uh, pulled on it too hard, but again, broken. Hop, oh, there's a good one. Okay? So, just, I can't emphasize enough that you fully have to understand the symbols, how to take a reading, and what does that reading represent. All right? Because without that, you're going to be totally lost. Do not rush through this. Turn off your meter. Take it apart. Put it away correctly so that the next student is prepared and ready to go. Now we're back and we're going to work with capacitors. Now, again, as I said earlier, you may not use this part of the exercise in the lab that you're working with, but understand somewhere down the road you're going to use that, so pay attention to it, please. Now, we already know how to use our meter here. You remember the MFD microfarad display right here. All right? If we were going to use this meter, which in this case we're not, but I'm going to show you how to do it. All right. You put your prongs in, your leads. You set it to microfarads. It can read up to 340 microfarad. All right. You set that so that you can see what you're working with and test your 
capacitors. It's going to work the same way no matter what meter I use. You should be familiar with this now. Set that off to the side. When you open up your training box, there may be one, two, three different types of meters in there. I, my purpose in life is to ensure that you fully understand how to use this equipment. So let's start off with what I consider to be the most idiot-proof operation available to mankind. First of all, you have to understand how to read a capacitor. All right. If you look up here, it shows 5 microfarads at 370 volts, 60 hertz. The 5 microfarad is what we're interested in. Now you notice it doesn't say MDF. It just says the, the microfarad symbol and 5. So you set that down, and the very first thing you need to do is take a screwdriver. Now, I understand there's controversy on do you use a screwdriver, do you not use a screwdriver, do you use a uh, watt resistor? Yes, to all of them. What you have to pay attention to is don't be touching the screwdriver in the metal when you go to zap this thing. So now what you do is you take your screwdriver and you run it across both leads here, both contact points. And what that's doing is it's draining the capacitor because capacitors are an energy source, storage energy source. If you don't, there's a very possibility if this has energy in it and you hook your meter up to it, you're going to blow it. All right? These have been used so often and they don't get enough voltage applied to them that what happens is they don't make any spark anymore. But if you go to the unit and run a unit and then take it off immediately and do this, very possible it's going to arc on you and it's just going to pop. And what that's doing is discharging the energy stored in that uh, capacitor. All right. Now we take our uh, little, little capacitor and this meter all right, which is just one version, all right, the first thing I want to do is set it to the microfarads I'm working with. You see down here on the bottom it says 0.01 to 10 microfarads. The top, 10 microfarads to 10,000 microfarads. Well, I'm only using a 5, so let me check this out and drop it down to where the scale is reasonable. I'll get a much better accurate uh, reading off of it than if I tried it on the 10. On the 10, it may not even register, okay? So don't be uh, going nuts when you don't see a reading right away because you may have it on the wrong scale. It does not matter what lead you put on what, all right? Don't get wrapped up around the axles. Put the lead on the alligator clip on one, the alligator clip on the other, Hold your meter and push the button and hold it. All right? It'll do the calculation for you. And if you do not wait until this thing stops, you're wasting your time. We got 5.2, give or take. Our capacitor requires to be 5 microfarads. You can have plus or minus 10% of that. As long as I'm plus or minus 10%, that unit is good. Now, the other thing that we haven't started yet in the program is where you're going to do an actual micro-reading re um, operation exercise on a live unit with it running. Uh, manufacturers are now saying that they're, um, it's better to do it when it's in full running mode. Uh, as long, of course, it's the unit is running, but um, it's almost like taking an amp reading. All right? So pay attention. Uh, that will be coming to you soon at uh, your local uh, uh, drugstore. All right. Now, this, this one, again, back to the two-leg, right? grounded out. 
that is known as a single capacitor. All right. This one is known as a dual capacitor. Dual. One, two, three. Why don't they call it tri? Well, because the center one is the common location. Center, right, center, left. Now also, you'll see up here, and I hope you can, there's the common, that C there. And then you got fan, and you got hermetic, meaning compressor. The common feeds both sides, as each side is separate from the other. I hope I explained that well enough. Now this is another different type of meter. All right. Does the same thing. All you have to do is ensure that you're on the right readings. Here is the off and on button. All right. Push it all the way to the far right. Now if you notice, it's saying resi uh, continuity. Well, if you see my microfarad symbol down here, my capacitor symbol, remember I have you, I'm forcing you to memorize all these symbols. This is a prime example. If you don't know what you're looking at, you surely can't fix it. So what you want to do is push it. There's your microfarad symbol. All right, so this is ready and set up to go. Now what I want to do is I want to look at my capacitor and see that now, being a dual capacitor, it'll have two readings. In this case, 25 slash 5 microfarads, 370 volt AC, 60 hertz. You need to understand how to read that and what those mean. 25 slash 5. 25 is always your, capa uh, your compressor, excuse me. Compressor is always going to need to have more microfarads. The 5 is your outdoor fan motor. All right? Turn it up. I reground it out. All right? I do one side, then I do the other. All right? It's drained. Now what I do is I'm going to hold this up so it's a little bit easier to see. But what you have to understand is if I touch this, and I break away from it, I have to reground it out because you're charging the capacitor. So what you want to do is just gently go down on both leads, touch it. Look at the meter. The microfarads are changing. All right, and that's hanging around 26, 27 microfarads. Remember, I got a 10 percent plus or minus microfarads on that. All right. I take it away. I let my meter go back to zero. Now I'm going from common to my fan. Don't, you know, be patient. 5.12 microfarads. So on my reading, it says 25.5. Well, I got 26, 27 on the compressor side and 5.12 or so on the fan side. This tells me that my, my capacitor here is serviceable. All right? Again, whenever you're changing a motor, a compressor, you must change the capacitors. Don't make it an option. The motor went out for a reason. And as you get into the course, you'll understand what purpose these things serve. A capacitor is extremely important. It helps with the, the motor of the unit, may it be a compressor or otherwise. If this craps out, so will the motor or the uh, compressor. It's just designed to do that. Without this help, the motor and the compressor have to work two or three times harder. Right? And it will wear it out and burn it out. Right? That concludes your meter understanding. Please read the book, understand what's being asked of you. Come out here, do a professional job, 
and always remember to ground the, the capacitors out so that you don't accidentally zap yourself. You'll only do it once, and that's kind of fun, you know, and, you know if you enjoy that type of stuff. All right? But uh, it's, um, like I said in the past, on all the exercises that you've seen me try to do, you must understand the equipment that you're working with. Otherwise, you're just spinning your wheels. And I'm guaranteeing you, as you get down to the uh, other courses, if you haven't mastered this skill in this level, you're going to be hurt. Thank you.